Hi guys, welcome to Satya News. Today, now in the third part of nutrition, we are going to learn about the accessory glands. These, these accessory glands are the glands which help in the digestive system. And first we will learn about the liver. This liver nearly weighs 1.5 kgs and it is formed from the endoderm and it consists of the left and the right lobules the right lobule is larger than the left lobule which is nearly 5 by 6 part of the liver and let's learn about the functions of liver now let us know about the functions of liver there are nearly 12 functions of the liver let us go one by one Secretion of bile. The liver secretes and synthesizes the bile juice and carbohydrate metabolism. Number two, carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, liver is the main unit for carbohydrate metabolism, and this carbohydrate metabolism nearly contains four steps. Number one, glycogenesis. Number two, glycogenolysis. Number three, gluconeogenesis. And number four, glyconeogenesis. And next, deamination and urea formation. Deamination, the process of converting the toxic amino acids into urea. And next, blood purification the liver it excretes the uh, dead blood cells and this is called blood purification now synthesis of plasma proteins the liver synthesis all types of proteins except the gamma globulins gamma globulins and next we'll go with the synthesis of heparin Synthesis of heparin. The heparin is a natural anticoagulant and this, that is synthesized by the liver. Now let us go with the vitamin A synthesis. The liver converts beta carotene into vitamin A and storage of vitamins. The liver stores vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K and vitamin B12 and mineral storage the liver stores minerals like iron cobalt copper nickel and molybdenum etc and detoxification the liver it um, gets rid of toxic materials from the body and hemopoiesis hemopoiesis means the formation of blood cells the liver forms blood cells uh, like the white blood cells and red blood cells in the embryonic stage and Later, we will know about the pancreas. Now, let us know about the bile juice and then later about the pancreas. Bile juice. And this bile juice is produced by the hepatocytic cells. hepatocytes of the liver and and this values is stored in the gallbladder this values does not secrete any enzymes so it is not called a true digestive enzyme now the composition of values this values is made up of nearly 98 percent of water and bile salts lecithin cholesterol and sodium ions and potassium ions and these four are organic constraints and these two are inorganic constraints and these bile salts are of two types the inorganic bile salts and the organic bile salts and in inorganic bile salts the bile juice contains uh, materials like NaCl 
Na2CO3 and NaHCO3. These inorganic salts neutralizes the acidic medium of the stomach and organic salts. These organic salts contain sodium torochloroate and sodium glycocholate. These organic salts help in the emulsification of fats. Emulsification. It is a process of digesting larger fat globules into smaller molecules. And then we will know about the functions of bile juice. Now the functions of bile juice. There are nearly five functions. Number one, neutralization of HCl. This bile juice, which is alkaline, uh, neutralizes the acidic medium of HCl. And then emulsification. The organic substances such as the one I mentioned previously, the sodium torocholate and sodium glycocholate helps in the emulsification of fats and then absorption of fat and fat soluble substances. And fat soluble substances. These fats are the fatty acids and glycerol. And the fat soluble substances are vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin K. And, and the next one is excretion. The bile salts such as bilirubin and bilirubin helps in the excretion of waste materials and then activation of lipase. The bile juice does not contain any enzyme but it helps in the activation of lipase for digestion of fats. Next we will learn about the pancreas. Now let us know about the pancreas. This pancreas is endodermal in origin. This pancreas is both exocrine and endocrine gland. 99% uh, of it is exocrine and 1% is endocrine. Now let us know about the exocrine part first. The pancreas contains a group of cells called acini. These are the secretory cells which secrete the enzyme pancreatic juice. These acini each contains a pancreatic ductule which together form the a common pancreatic duct. And this duct is called duct of Wirsang. And from this pancreatic duct, the pancreatic juice joins with the, the common hepatopancreatic duct. Hepatopancreatic duct. From there, they reach the duodenum and helps in the digestion in the small intestine. And next, we will learn about the endocrine part. The endocrine part. First, this endocrine part contains cells like alpha cells, beta cells, gamma cells and PP cells. These cells are present in between the SNI group of SNI and these are called islets of Langerhans. This is the silent. Islets of Langerhans. And these cells secrete insulin 
glucagon somatostatin and pancreatic polypeptide hormone that's it for today we have finished the digestive system in human means in the next class we will learn about the respiratory system in human means please subscribe to satya news channel if you have any comments or suggestions please drop them in the comment box thank you